Ee, Okey, Münir presentation'ını yapacak. Tamam, yaptık. Her şey tamam. Beni duyuyor musunuz? Yes, I would like uh, Professor Münir to present his keynote lecture, please. Thank hear you, me. Professor Münir. You hear me? You hear me very well? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, and the screen is also... Uh, okay. You can see it. Okay, right. good. Okay, yes. Thank upload you. it again, upload it. Yes, yes. It's on, no? It's on. Now it's on, yes. Okay. okay, thank you very much. So, uh, thank you. So, first of all, um, uh, I'm thankful to Professor Chavit and uh, Professor Safi for inviting me uh, to deliver this keynote lecture uh, as representing the African region. Uh, this work is uh, a recent development. Uh, and uh, I would mention that the content of the, uh, the Q-Note uh, talk is a bit different, is developed more than the file I sent you. So <clears throat> uh, the presentation is titled The New Tool for the Measurement of Soil Shear Strength. Maybe it's modified. Okay. Uh, the outline of this work is introduction. So I will... Uh, uh, remand about soil testing method and what happens with the soil disturbance. Then I will present uh, uh, the novel tool, uh, the called cylindrical penetrometer. Okay, and we will uh, we will present the testing procedure. And using this tool, uh, first investigation was. Uh, on the determination of the unbrained cohesion of two soft clay. And for this, we uh, suggested a, a method of determination. And uh, there was validation of the results by the, the cylindrical penetrometer results with the um, classical shear test. And uh, a second investigation, so uh, we will talk about the shear strength of cohesive uh, frictional soil. And uh, we will um, explain how we can determine the cohesion and the friction angle. And we will discuss, of course, the proposed results. And then conclusion and forthcoming development of this work. So when we deal with in-situ soil testing method and related to disturbance, uh, we can see on this slide, for example, in this first case on the left, when we do, for example, the pressure meter test, which uh, needs to create a bore hole and the vertical, um, I mean, uh, sides of this bore hole are disturbed. And then we will we will uh, introduce or we will um, put our uh, cell measurements. And as such, when we measure the colored uh, limit pressure, we measure it in a disturbed soil. And this is, I mean, uh, uh, this is to say, uh, we measuring, we are measuring failure characteristics affected by the disturbance of the soil prior to the measurement of shear phase. Uh, on the contrary, of, for example, we remind about uh, the CPT or the SPT test. Okay, So we have the tool which placed at the bottom of the boring. And then we, uh, for preparing to the test, 
we have an initial penetration without measurements. And after that, we will push, or the tool penetrates the soil to measure uh, the even the, uh, the, tip, uh, the tip resistance or the end blow count. So that means uh, we can distinguish between, for example, uh, the pressure meter test and the other test, uh, we have uh, soil affected by the disturbance prior to the measurements. And in this case, we can say that the failure characteristics are not affected by the soil disturbance. So, but uh, methodology of determination. So we need to estimate failure characteristics, the well-known cohesion and friction angle. And all time from the, those institute tests, SPT, CPT, or pressure meter, we usually need correlation. That means we will measure, for example, the end blow count, or we measure the tip resistance, or we will measure the limit net pressure. And using correlation, we will deduce either the friction angle or maybe the undrained cohesion, etc. So this means uh, I can say that we have a main limitation when estimating failure characteristics because uh, we will use correlation and we know that correlation uh, depends on the soil type, location, and we can say that it is not accurate for the design. But I can add also it is non-direct determination of C and phi. That means from the classical institute test, we cannot measure directly the cohesion and friction angle. And uh, in the same context, when we deal with soft soil, we have disturbance. So we know that uh, prior to the institute test or prior to the laboratory test, the occurrence of a disturbance is more likely. And for example, to um, uh, reduce the uh, disturbance effect uh, from soft soil, uh, there is the vein shear test, uh, which enables to uh, reduce the disturbance be before the, me the measurement of the SU. But uh, with a device or with apparatus, we still face the, over the overestimation of the undrained cohesion. And, and using the same uh, methodology, we have to introduce correction factor and correlation, uh, which not always applicable uh, or applicable with restriction depending on the soft soil we are considering. Uh, we uh, suggested earlier for the vein shear test to limit the measurements of the torque uh, in the range of small deformation and we can, um, we suggested the method to determine maybe safely the unbrained cohesion, uh, to not overestimate this characteristics, but still the disturbance effect is not solved. This means uh, using the vein shear test or performing the vein shear test, when you, when you penetrate the soil before the measurements, uh, the, the the blade of the of the of the pain apparatus. So we 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 have some disturbance of this. And as such uh, came uh, the idea how uh, to think about a new tool or new method of measurements to avoid the disturbance effect and also to provide a drive determination of the cohesion and the friction angle for all soil types without using correlation. And this is uh, the main purpose. And the first idea came in 2013 for the issue measurements because uh, in our laboratory, we um, investigated very much uh, the behavior of toon soft clay characterization, et cetera, using different uh, experiments and numerical approach, et cetera. And uh, the first investigation uh, uh, concerned the tune soft clay. Uh, we, we know a soft soil, uh, its characterization 
inform that uh, it has low permeability, uh, colloidal and compressible structure, and the unbrained shear resistance uh, is reduced to unbrained cohesion. The soil is purely cohesive. And, uh, but when sampling, sampling uh, in, in soft clay, we have the soil disturbance. And again, we have unreadable determination of the unbrained cohesion. So the tool we are suggesting, first, uh, we call it the cylindrical shear tool, but uh, later or recently, we changed the cylindrical penetrometer. So uh, what are the components of the tool? We can see here that uh, this is the tool and it's composed by a hollow cylinder two, and a piston. Piston is part three, it's this uh, upper side. And then the piston itself comprises two uh, components, an annular ring four, and a headless socket screw five. Okay. And the annular ring itself comprises an inferior disc six, the lower part, and a superior disc seven, which we can see here. So uh, the design of the cylindrical penetrometer uh, uh, was possible by manufacturing two uh, sizes. Uh, we call it the small size which on the right and the big size which on the left. And here we have the dimension of uh, the cylindrical uh, penetrometer. So with the big size, the height is uh, 100 millimeters and uh, internal diameter, inner diameter about 60 millimeters. And the small size the height is 70 millimeters and the inner diameter is 35.2. Okay, so uh, how it works? Uh, the cylindrical penetrometer uh, is a shear tool and we can say it's a thin hollow cylinder with a sharpened tip. It means at the lower part here, we have a sharpened tip of this uh, cylindrical penetrometer. So we need, after preparing a soil sample, we need to uh, position the, the tool. And on the slide, so sometimes you, you, you will see CST, the first um, name we gave it to the city. Sometimes we will see the CP, but see the same thing. So we need to position the, the tool at the upper side of the soil sample. And then, uh, similar to the um, SPT test, we will make an initial penetration without measurements. That means we will, we will have a downward displacement of the tool and we have uh, an initial penetration D0, okay? And then we will start the shear phase, that is the penetration of the of this CP or the CST uh, over uh, a penetration going from D0, the initial penetration, to the final one, DF. So it works like a penetrometer, but without a tip, there is no tip. You only have uh, the shaft component. Uh, first investigation was about uh, using the constituted uh, tuna soft clay. Uh, on this, uh, on this, uh, on this uh, picture, you can see a, a consolidation cell in which we uh, we constitute the, the, the soft clay. Uh, with height 45 centimeter and near diameter 90, and the soil was consolidated under uh, 30 kPa. And after the initial consolidation, the present study, as we can see here, we have many parameters to characterize the reconstitute soft clay. For example, total unit weight is about 70, water content is about 51, and so on, specific gravity, liquid limit, etc. But we compare this reconstitute of soil with the prior work uh, since 20 years. In the prior work, we can see that the reconstitute soil uh, have a similar total unit weight 
and similar water content. Maybe slightly different uh, parameters about the liquid limit plus CC index. But overall, it's soft soil. And we can see here that for the earlier work, the unbrained cohesion was 8 kPa and quite negligible unbrained friction angle. And uh, in the recent work, uh, we uh, collected so many data about Tunis soft clay. Here we can see many locations uh, in the Tunis city. And uh, we have had a lot of projects. And you can see that mostly Tunis soft clay is in the range of plastic to highly plastic clays. Uh, fully organic, not very organic. And here we can see the present study. So here we have the data of the reconstituted soil. We take it uh, somewhere in Tunis. Now, after the constitution in this consolidation cell, we say cut it in three portion, each of 15 centimeter thickness. And we have portion one, portion two, and portion three. So uh, we will show the location of the test we performed using the cylinder calculator meter uh, on a side of a sample portion. We will understand maybe easier. So as we can see here, for example, if I will take portion two, at the upper side, I will do for example, I can do uh, a test using the big size tool and two test using the small size tool. Of course, uh, respecting some minimum distance from the uh, the border of the uh, of the cell where we constitute the soil. And as we can see here, uh, when we cut the three portion, we performed uh, the test using the big size tool uh, at the upper side of portion two, at the bottom side, and uh, equally for portion three at the upper side and the bottom side. Why? Using the small, uh, the small tool, we uh, performed two other tests as explained here. So that means in total we performed about uh, 4 plus 4, 8 and plus 4, 12 tests. Why? For portion 1, we didn't uh, consider it for uh, the cylinder calculator testing. Uh, in uh, details, so we use for testing the three axle load frame, as you can see here, and the soil sample is there, one, okay, and the load frame is here, and we use a, a load cell to measure the resistance of the soil when, of course, the tool penetrates the soft soil, and here we have a displacement transducer to measure uh, the penetration. And the rate of penetration corresponds uh, roughly to the unbrained condition. It's, say, uh, a speedy test in terms of, uh, in term of uh, rate of penetration. Now, this is what we performed for the test, but how we will determine the SU? Uh, first of all, we can say that in terms of shear strain developed, uh, during the direct shear test and the cylindrical shear tool or the CP cylindrical penetrometer, there is some similarity. But the difference, the main difference is the following. But uh, when we perform the she direct shear test, we have soil to soil failure. But when we perform the cylindrical shear tool, we have a soil tool failure or CST failure. That means we measure the interface uh, characteristics. But uh, first of all, we can, for a given penetration, we can calculate uh, the sheared area by the penetrated tool, that is both the, the shaft uh, perimeter multiplied by this penetration for in, in, uh, from inside and outside. So this is the total sheared area. But we know as we uh, so in the stable uh, friction angle of purely cohesive soil is mostly zero and the shear strength reduces to the unbrained cohesion. So uh, here an example of the measurements of the load penetration curve uh, using the CP. And uh, 
Of course, if we can imagine what we'll obtain, uh, the more you penetrate or the tool penetrates the soft soil, the more the resistance uh, is increasing. And that means at some stage we never uh, we never uh, saw a, a peak for the load penetration curve. But the problem is where we should get the ultimate force and the corresponding ultimate um, penetration to determine the SU. This is the question. So, and here uh, we are again, and we need to remind that determining failure tactics should be all time in, in, uh, in small deformation. Okay. And as we can see here, uh, for this case, the penetration is about one centimeters to determine the ultimate, uh, the ultimate vertical force. So uh, the SU simply can be determined from this equation, uh, saying that the total force, resisting force to the penetration of the tool is the SU value, which is considered constant. We have it small penetration multiplied by the total uh, contact area between the soil and the tool and of course after performing all the tests i showed you we we in this table we can see uh, for example the data we collected from all the tests so in this um, we we have uh, from the cp test we ultimate penetration and the ultimate force and the calculated SU, SU CST, that means the unbranded cohesion from the cylindrical shear test or the cylindrical penetrometer. And you can see that those values are quite small. Now, we uh, determine the average value, for example, portion of the reconstitutes, sometimes using the big size tool and the small tool. Okay, and will be again, I mean, the comparison. And as we can see here, the average value using distortion is about 9.4. Why? For the, for the example here, we have 12.5. And in the third part, upper side, nine 9.2. But we can say that in total average for the SU determined by the SU CST is about 9.8. We compared those values and shear tests performed on the same reconstituted soil. And it was the sample which is at the upper side where we did not perform the, the cylindrical uh, penetrometer test. And as we can see here, there is um, a good match between the unbrained cohesion determined by the direct shear test and the CST test. But of course, there is some relative difference depending on the case. So we can see here that the relative difference is quite small, very small. And the ratio between the two ways is, is roughly one. Only in this case, maybe we have uh, regarding this, um, this ratio, uh, if this ratio is lower than one, that means the SU by, measured by the CST is lower than the one measured by the dioxy test. But overall, in terms of average value, we are not, uh, I will not say we are close, depending on the case, but we are not we are in the same range of the determined uh, endpoint cohesion. And as for the purpose of comparison, uh, to assess the CPT, the CP test results for tuned soft clay, in an earlier work, we um, performed uh, unbrained pre-axial test, but on consolidated samples, it's like consolidated unbrained. And as we can see here, uh, of course, the more we consolidate, the more the SU, which reduces to the failure uh, resistance uh, increases a bit, but here we can see we have the data for the test we performed under 30 kPa. And second, 
considering uh, the shear um, direct shear test SU envelope from different tests. So we can say that uh, we can measure uh, accurately the unbrained cohesion of a soft soil using the CP uh, tool uh, as compared to the classical reaction shear test. Now, of course, in our thinking, uh, it is possible to measure the unbrained cohesion. It's maybe simpler than the cohesion frictional soils. And as continuation of the first investigation, uh, we can ask this question, is it possible using the CP to measure the friction angle of a purely frictional soil? The reply is yes, but don't forget that the mobilized friction angle along the CP um, and uh, is rather the interface soil CP friction angle, the well-known delta F. That means the friction angle of the interface between a soil and say some rigid medium. Second question, uh, if we can uh, determine uh, the friction angle, what we can say, can we determine uh, the shear strength of the interface soil CP friction angle and the cohesion as well? That means our soil is both cohesive and frictional. Okay, uh, the reply is yes, but how to proceed? So, and now this is maybe the part of the presentation which is not included in the paper I uh, submitted to the ZM uh, conference. So, uh, in terms of experimental investigation, so we took uh, a curry sand usually used for construction and uh, we determined the grind, si the grind size distribution of the sand. It is likely uh, well grade sand uh, with the specific gravity uh, 2.643 and uh, as it is a loose sand from the direct shear test we measured about 29 degrees friction angle and uh, zero cohesion okay and then we performed uh, say two states of reference that means uh, we will uh, compact the sand uh, both uh, normal proctor condition and modified proctor condition. Of course, we need to determine the optimal water content for the two uh, compacted or two state of reference. As of course, as we can see here, uh, for the normal proctor test, the maximum dry density is a bit low, 18, but for the modified proctor test is uh, rather 18.5 and uh, the water content is a bit lower, say 10.5 or uh, 8.5 for the, for the modified proctor. Okay, so using the, the proctor, uh, the proctor, I mean, uh, specimen, compact proctor specimen, we perform the direct shear test and we measure uh, for the sun, uh, when uh, it is the case of remolded dry sand, the cohesion is about 2.6 and the friction angle is 33. And for the compacted sand at the optimum proctor, uh, water content, the cohesion is uh, a bit high and also the friction angle is about 39 degrees, maybe a little bit. What does it mean? It means that the compaction uh, induced a non-negligible uh, cohesion of this uh, supposed uh, or assumed uh, cohesionless soil when it is uh, naturally deposited. So this means we have an idea about the cohesion and friction angle of the sand in the two reference state. Now, uh, using or performing the CP test on those compacted sand uh, at optimum water content, uh, this is what we obtain in terms of the recorded vertical force in Newton and the penetration of the CP. Okay, we can see that we have uh, like uh, a cloud of dots and 
the average the average trends can be written under this form that means because we have like fluctuation when measuring the uh, i didn't show you the um, the load uh, displacement curve the load displacement curve i mean during the test but we can we have some fluctuation okay but we can say that uh, the ultimate load is proportional to the ultimate penetration. But the problem is, as we mentioned for the soft clay, we always we have an increasing force. Which couple do we, uh, we have to take as ultimate force and the corresponding ultimate penetration to consider for determining the failure characteristics? This is the problem. And then here we move to the method of determination we are suggesting. So let us start first. Uh, the soil is assumed cohesionless. That means cohesion is zero. And we know that the shaft component or the tangential component or the shear stress uh, is the normal stress that is the horizontal one multiplying the tangent delta F. Okay? And uh, as we can see here, we add Kp, the coefficient of passive earth praise, pressure. Why? Because uh, when we, when we, when the, the when the CP penetrate the soil, it 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 it, it toward the soil. That the soil is in passive state because the CP, the cylindric pyramid, move toward the soil, and as such we can uh, calculate the ultimate force by integrating between uh, the initial penetration, the final one, uh, using this equation. And what we obtain, uh, we can rearrange this equation as, um, uh, as, as follows. Here we have only a function of the friction angle. Uh, delta F is mostly proportional to the friction angle. And the uh, coefficient of proportionality may be from 0, 0.5 to 1. And the Kp, considering the Rankine theory, is maybe the ratio between 1 plus sinus phi and 1 minus sinus phi. And on the right side, we have a function where we, uh, we have uh, known parameters or value. We know that the ultimate force we can measure as well as the ultimate one, and uh, gamma, and the internal and the external uh, diameter of the CP are known. So uh, what is the method of determination? Uh, uh, in a first simplified approach, we considered a fully mobilized friction. That means I can assume that the delta F is equal phi. That means alpha equal one. And then uh, we can say that we have um, an analytical function which only depends on the friction angle and an experimental function which depends on the vertical force and the penetration of the two and we need to uh, look for the value of the friction angle which fits uh, the balance between the experimental function and the analytical function and of course we have to run uh, maybe calculation, but uh, targeting the friction angle in this uh, range, because we know uh, we measured for the sand about 28 degrees loose sand. And when well compacted, it is almost uh, by 40 degrees. But we, we considered very, very small increment when we are changing the friction angle. And now what we can see here, of course, when calculating the experimental function, we need to take the value of P ultimate and D ultimate. And this equation comes from the observed one. I didn't mention uh, it's the two or three slides uh, previous one. And what we can, what we will do, we will consider, we will vary the ultimate penetration and the vertical force that we used to calculate the experimental function and along with a variation of the friction angle to calculate the analytical function. 
And of course, uh, we need to use Excel solver. And for example, to look for the phi value, uh, considering the relative difference between the, uh, the experimental function and the analytical function in terms of percentage that is quite small. Oh, so uh, for example, maybe uh, I will show you the Excel uh, sheet later. So if I assume cohesion is zero and I neglect the weight of the cylindrical penetrometer, we determined about 39.4 uh, degrees as value of the friction angle. And this value is a bit uh, overestimated uh, regarding the, what we measured in terms of the shear strength, uh, in terms of the direct shear test. So the idea is, so the way, the way we are uh, thinking, the way we are doing uh, will help us. So now we need to take account of the cohesion and investigate the case of a cohesion. Uh, of course, uh, uh, brief, briefly, what can we say? The, the I mean, the uh, failure stress in terms of uh, shear stress uh, is C plus the horizontal stress tangent delta phi. And the balance of forces when performed with the CP test, I cannot go through details. We can write P ultimate minus the, uh, the weight of the cylindrical penetrometer is equal to this quantity. Okay. And for example, using the small size tool, the weight is about, uh, about 1.46 Newton. And then now the, the expression of the, uh, of the, uh, analytical function remains the same, but the one of the experiment uh, is changing. Why? Because we have the cohesion component. And now what I can do, uh, for example, after the direct shear test, we measured uh, cohesion about uh, phi, and the friction angle was about 38. And uh, I will show you right now on the Excel file, uh, Excel uh, file, uh, Excel sheet, that we obtained a very similar value using this um, using this method of resolution. Okay, so now to conclude about this work, uh, we suggest a novel tool for shear strength determination, which is called the cylindrical penetrometer. The merit of this tool is to avoid is to avoid soil dispersions and the use of correlation at the same time. From experiment, we did experiments by uh, manufacturing two uh, cylindrical penetrometer models, and we considered first the constitution of tools soft clay, and we performed some tests. Uh, it's not only the determination of SU, but we suggest a novel method of determination of SU, specific due to cylindrical penetrometer. And the measure and range cohesion uh, is found somehow dependently of the CST model diameter. I mean, using the small size or the big size tool, we determine quite similar SU value. And the assessment of the CP test results for soft clay uh, was uh, after comparison uh, with direct shear uh, and reaction shear test results. And the recommendation, of course, is to uh, do more tests for other maybe soft soils, etc. Now, the second part of the conclusion uh, regarding the cohesive frictional soil. So we can determine the friction angle and the cohesion, but the method uh, uh, assumes a presumed soil cohesion and the friction angle is determined, can be determined accurately. And the assessment of CP results with direct shear test is promising. So after the Excel uh, sheet uh, calculation, I am suggesting. So for common development, uh, using the CP for testing intact soil specimen that we collect from uh, geotechnical investigation, institute geotechnical investigation. So we started already this work and the CP, uh, as I hope you 
uh, understood clearly, but the CP is a model of Shelby tube, what we usually use to collect samples. But uh, in situ investigation, so is very uh, feasible using uh, the uh, this tool, and it is programmed to use the cylindrical peritometer. Uh, to determine the collision friction angle using an in situ test, uh, say in full scale uh, condition. So, about publication, because it's recent work. So, uh, 2021, we have had uh, a paper on, uh, on the Third ASEAN Conference Physical Modeling Geotechnics, and we patented this, uh, this tool at the national level in Tunisia, and we submitted the PCT. Uh, okay, uh, let me tell you that for the national one, it is agreed, but the, for the PCT, the reviewers uh, say that it's not original work, and but yet I, we did not respond to them. And also in the very recent uh, Sydney conference, we suggest paper and at this stage uh, more importantly we submitted uh, a paper in the geotechnical testing journal istm and we submitted the revised version uh, more likely it would be accepted so acknowledge goes to mr Derel Azais, my phd students uh, she manufactured the two cp model and performed the cp test by herself and later or recently, Mr. Sergio Andromania, and another PhD students, uh, will uh, participate with us to perform the forthcoming developments. Also, of course, for um, CP expenses, manufacturing, and so on, uh, Central Tunisia Consulting is acknowledged to support this uh, research investigation. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. Munir, thank you very much for your perfect keynote.